So yeah, as Alex mentioned, I'm Raymond. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Tbot. But today I want to talk to you about building a hardware company that doesn't sell hardware. So we're all familiar with the razor blade model. model. <laughs> You'll sell some sort of widget, but you make your real money on the refills for that widget. So it could be the razor blades, it could be an e-reader where you're selling literature, a game console where you're selling games, or the Amazon Alexa where you're selling anything on Amazon. Um, but I want to talk about a subset of those companies that don't even sell that initial widget. Big things like an office printer. You may pay a lease on it, you may even just get it for free and pay a per page fee. Or an ATM that will actually pay the venue money to put it in there and make their money back on the transactions. Or these cell phone charging stations that will again pay rent to put these in there, charge cell phones for free and make all of their money on the advertising. Similarly with car sharing, they will put a car in your condo for free as long as you hit some sort of monthly minimums. And that's what we've done at Tbot. We have a similar type of model. We've built a kiosk that is essentially a self-serve tea store for less than 10 square feet. It's a fast cup of loose leaf tea, it's personalized, and it's designed for the grab and go market. So my background, as Alex mentioned briefly, is in mechatronics engineering. I was doing my PhD at U of T when my high school buddy, Brian, who's also an engineer, told me about a big problem at his family's tea store. His mom literally couldn't make tea fast enough to serve this huge line of customers. So together we automated it. We were incubated here in Toronto at the Creative Destruction Lab um, at Mars, and then we re most recently graduated from Y Combinator. And we're now scaling these kiosks across North America without hiring a single salesperson because of this business model. Because we literally go up to a real estate agent or a realtor and say that we will install one of these kiosks for free and write you a check every month based on the revenue share. So that's what I want to talk about. If you want to build a hardware company without actually selling the hardware, the benefits of this is that you can actually get your product to market faster. Compared to the other hardware companies who are constantly iterating before they can put it in their uh, customer's hands, we put our early prototypes out before they were finished. Brian and I were still pouring the water by hand and collecting the money manually. And those early prototypes are now retired, but we still sold our product because our product is T, not the bot. Um, it's also, we're much less sensitive to the bill of material costs or the actual hardware costs. So that lets us focus on the quality of product instead of the quantity. And the third benefit is that the recurring revenue model is inherent. Like the razor blade model, we are selling a consumable. Um, so again, it's inherent in the business model. But it's not without its cons. We have a big capitally intensive uh, company. That's why we've raised some VC capital to launch 100 bots across North America, and the payback period is slow. Um, there's huge logistics problems. We've, sold, we've served over 25,000 cups of tea, but that means that each of our kiosks needs to be fully stocked with these consumables, cups, lids, sleeves, tea, water. Um, and last but not least, we need expertise beyond the hardware that you're selling. So whether it's literature or advertising or tea, you can't just be a hardware company. So in conclusion, I'll mention that you should always, always focus on building something that users love. And building hardware is very hard, but not selling it means that nobody's coming to you and returning that hardware product. You don't have to deal with that piece of it. And I would also encourage you not to sell your hardware so you can get your product to market faster, you can iterate on your product after you've released it, and you can focus on user experience instead of the actual hardware costs. All right, thank you. <laughs> Questions? Box. So I've used a uh, T-Bot before. I was wondering uh, if you're ever going to support, like, uh, bring your own water bottle, like uh, being able to fill it out without <laughs> using a paper bottle. Yeah, absolutely. So right now we sell in a paper cup. We do have some in corporate office models where you can put a ceramic mug in, which is reusable. Um, but we are introducing a reusable water bottle for our campuses.
yes, my high school buddy and I put a shareholders and agreement in place. <laughs> but my other question is, uh, um, is your competitive advantage the T, the hardware, or the, the land grab, the real estate? Yeah, that's a really good question. We've gone back and forth on this uh, quite a few times. Is it the T? Um, definitely. We have proprietary blends. Each customer is creating their own proprietary blend. Um, but we have patented the hardware and things of, like that, of that nature. But at the end of the day, I think it'll be a land grab because we know competitors are coming. Um, that's why we raised this venture capital money to expand as quickly as possible. Where can we try one locally? I'm not sure where that question came from. Um, thanks. We're at U of T, York University. We'll be at Mars soon. We've got some down in Chicago and some more launching in the US. Who's responsible for refilling supplies? internationally or across the country? Yeah, really good question. Um, we, we've, we're we building on a couple of different business models. So in our corporate model, like at the Google office in Chicago, um, Google outsources all of their food services to a third party. So we work with that third party. They maintain it every day. Um, on college campuses, we partner with food services providers like Aramark. Um, so they're the ones maintaining the day-to-day -day consumables. Um, but we're still responsible for the overall maintenance of the machine. One last question. I guess I have a similar question to someone from before. I once tried to try a T-Bot, but I wasn't able to because I actually have an allergy. I guess this is something when you get into dealing with products, with uh, allergies, especially food products, how do you deal with that as there is, seems to be a growing market of people with some pretty severe allergies? Yeah, 100%. And that's the thing about being a hardware company that just doesn't sell hardware. We have all these extra challenges like allergies. Um, currently, we're erring on the safe side and telling everyone with an allergy to stay away from it, but eventually we want to build bots that will have, you know, some nut-free bots, some whatever your allergy is, citrus-free bots, whatever your allergy might be. Um, we're working on that piece. Thank you.